In this video, I'm going to be machining a Delrin anti-backlash nut. The design is very similar to the Open Builds anti-backlash nut. Um, I actually like the design, so I, I made my own. It's very similar. The way it works is there's a uh, there's a central hole for an eight millimeter Acme uh, lead screw, and then there's um, this kind of second part towards the bottom with a, a screw hole there that allows you to put a screw in there to preload the lead screw. So you can uh, eliminate the backlash and then you can see the holes there for captive nuts and uh, uh, m5 screws and that's how you attach it to your gantry plate to cam this i am using uh, an eighth inch um, single flute end mill from onsrude and i'm doing uh, first an adaptive pass to clear out the holes this clears out both the the area for the captive nuts as well as the um, the through holes for the m5 screws and then I go around the perimeter and adaptive out the uh, exterior of the part. Because my Delrin stock is only half an inch and this part is about a half an inch, I can't do the normal thing of machining just the top um, and then flipping it over and decking off the hat that's left over that I was using to hold it in the vise. So instead what I have to do is I have to machine the top half, a little more than the top half, and then flip it and machine a little more than the bottom half. And if you can see here, uh, this is actually showing the machining from the bottom. And then if I've aligned everything correctly, uh, it should end up uh, matching well enough. So here's my stock. It's a one and a half inch by half inch Delrin bar stock. I want to cut it down to about one and a half inch by one and a half inch by half inch. So here's cutting through it on the bandsaw. It flies through it very quickly because it's pretty soft compared to uh, the metals I usually cut. And then the first thing to do is actually to take it to the drill press and drill the hole that the, uh, the lead screw is going to go through the center. And I do this first because I want to make sure that I have a nice solid drilled and tapped hole before I go machine away a bunch of material uh, to create that, that sort of spring for the anti-backlash feature. These are the speeds and feeds I'm using. Uh, again, it's a single fluid end mill and I'm running it um, a little bit of a slower spindle speed than you might think for an eighth inch, but I, I want to uh, keep the chip load really high. So my feed per tooth is up at three thousandths, which is definitely higher than I would normally do in something like aluminum for a, an eighth inch end mill on my machine anyway. And I also up the speed a little bit. Again, just I'm trying to get the feed rate high enough that I'm not going to be melting the plastic or anything like that. And this is what the uh, end mill is, if you, if you can make it out. It's a 65-012 from Onsrud, specifically made for, for plastics. And it's got a quarter inch shank and then it necks down to uh, an eighth inch single flute cutter. So if you notice the machine looks a little different than my other videos, it's because I actually have modified my mill even further. So now it's not even really an open builds mini mill anymore. It's kind of my own weird hybrid thing. I have a few parts left over that I'm still using it from it, but it's mainly just some of the extrusion and uh, plates at this point. Uh, I also got a, uh, a better vise. I was using a drill press vise before and I finally got a, a little uh, tool, tool maker's vise that has been working pretty well for me. It's just a screwless vise. I've also changed the way that I do my uh, zeroing. I used to use a feeler gauge and rub it next to the next to the end mill and see if I could feel when it caught the, the feeler gauge. What I'm doing instead is something that I saw on uh, some other channels on YouTube, and, and it's actually using a, a half inch gauge pin and holding it uh, up against the, the work and between the work and the tool and then jogging the machine slowly uh, away from the work until the pin falls through. And I found that to be a very repeatable and uh, very fast way to, to zero things. So that's basically what I do exclusively for all my axis zeroing now.
All right, so here we're going to start cutting the, the holes on the top for the captive nuts and also the through holes for the M5 screws. And now I'm just checking the clearance to make sure everything is going to clear and not run into the vise. Um, and then it's going to start the adaptive contour around the outside to cut that, that outer contour. Uh, here's a close-up just so you can see what it looks like. It's hard to see in this uh, video, unfortunately, because it's, a, it's white Delrin, so it just looks like white on white. Um, you might be able to see a little better here where it's uh, cut out the holes. So at this point, I uh, flipped it and started machining the other side. And uh, the zeroing was actually a little tricky because of the way that I set my zero. I didn't have a really easy way to zero it on the y-axis, so I didn't get it perfectly lined up on the y-axis, but the x-axis actually was very close to being perfect.
So here's what it looked like uh, as it came off the machine. And then after um, getting the, the nuts put in and getting everything drilled and tapped, uh, and getting the, the preload screw put in there and then screwing it onto the lead screw. Um, it's actually pretty hard to find the, the taps for the trapezoidal lead screws, but you can find them on eBay. They just take a while to get there. I actually really like the design of the, of the open builds anti-backlash nut. It is very secure, surprisingly rigid, uh, but it's still pretty low friction, which is nice. Thank <laughs> you. 